Are you interested in metal roof details that you know 100% will never leak? Let me show you how we do it. Hey guys, ASM 101, Alex Prothman here. Thanks for clicking on. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how we properly flash a chimney with standing seam metal roofing. This is the fourth video in a five part series where we take you step by step on how to approach these details, how to lay them out, how to fabricate them, and how to install them. If you haven't seen any of the preceding videos that are to this one, I suggest you go back and watch them. I'll put a link to the playlist up in this corner. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any of the future content. Let's go to the roof mock-up. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, let's start by getting sidewall length. These measurements are gonna come into play later on. I'm gonna tie a little knot in a little string. We're going to install a screw in line with the seam of the panel. This is going to allow us to hook the string on, extend up, and here I'm gonna get my parallel line and measure bottom and top to make sure I'm getting a nice even measurement. Mark that on the roof, get my sidewall height, and we're just checking stuff off the list here. We're gonna get a roof field angle. We're gonna get the chimney toe angle or the chimney face angle, whatever you wanna call it. I got a sweep slope angle, a, uh, a sweep slope or a sweep angle, whatever you wanna call it. I got a, a chimney heel angle. Again, uh, really simple things to get, but all completely essential for this detail. I got, a, I got an overall length here and we're gonna just start dropping in our dimensions. We're gonna start laying this baby out. All right, I got a, my wall height, I have my male seam allowance, I got my roof. So these are the, these are the, the lines that we're gonna use to break form. But as soon as we have our lines put into place here, we're gonna start dropping in the angles that are required for the double seams coming off the corners of the chimney. Kind of to assist you guys in following along, I'm gonna mark the piece as I go so you understand the lines and what they represent. So here is the male seam. We just marked the chimney side. This squiggly line is a scrap representation. So I'm just gonna cut that off now. Oh, there goes my pen, oops. That's okay. We're just gonna keep rocking. We're gonna, we're gonna cut through. Markers dropping, it doesn't matter. We just keep cutting. Get rid of this scrap. It, it holds no value here. Let's just get it gone. Peace out, scrappy scrap. All right, top, bottom. It's good to know the orientation when you're laying stuff out. All right, first angle of the process. We have the roof field angle. We're gonna drop this in Going across, this measurement right here is very important, so make sure that you at least have two inches here, minimum, to allow for the seam later on. Drop that line in, like so. And once we got this line drawn in, we can move on to the sweep slope. We'll drop this in. Guys, follow along, do the process as I do it, and you will be successful in this detail. All right, we got the sweep slope in. Now we're gonna drop in the chimney toe angle or the chimney face angle, whatever you'd like to call it. Okay, once those lines are in, I'm just gonna mark here, we have roof field, and we have the chimney toe, the chimney face, and then we have the sweep slope angle, or the sweep angle. Okay, just to kind of give an overview, here it is. 
This is kind of how it should look. And now we're gonna bisect. So grab a ruler, wide, wider the better. It's okay, this is gonna help us bisect that line. So where that intersection is is where we're gonna draw this line through. Once we have that line drawn through, and after I mark it, we can move to laying out the top of the female seams here. So here's a, a female allowance we have here because it's gonna finish the bottom seam. It's gonna match up to a male seam allowance. You can drop these allowance marks in. Once I have these marks put in, I'm gonna draw lines in. These lines represent exactly where all the bends are going to be. So they're good to draw in to get a good understanding of where all the bends are gonna line up. Here, I'm gonna draw, extend these lines so they intersect. And then I'm gonna draw a line going through that intersection. Once I have that line drawn in, I can get a quick measurement of this right here. And I'm gonna transfer that measurement forward and draw that in right here. And what this is gonna do is gonna allow us to start our radius line, our arc line for the sweep. And this is kind of why we call it a sweep because it sweeps from the top to the bottom in a, in a curved motion, a gradual slope. So keep in mind when making these slopes, try and make them as gradual as possible. It will help in the fabrication and the double folding here. I'm gonna measure that and I'm gonna transfer that measurement to the rest of the lines, the sweep angle line and the bisect line. So is the, the chimney face true height being transferred to the sweep angle and the bisect line and now I'm connecting them all. So make sure to follow along in this process. If, if you need to pause the video, please do um, or rewind and rewatch this video. These are important aspects to this detail. So make sure to follow along. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna drop in our cheek length or our side chimney length. Once we have that drawn in, we can square that line off across the piece. Once that's squared off, we have, we have our roof field line squared off of the chimney. And now we're gonna drop in our chimney heel angle. Mark that sucker in and get that Get that line going, extending up to the end of the piece. Here we have the chimney side, and now we have that chimney heel angle drawn in. Once these lines are drawn in, we can go ahead and bisect these lines. I'm gonna grab my ruler. I'm going to Get a close up on this bisection, kind of give you guys a good idea of what bisecting looks like. Bisect, intersect. Wow. That's some entertaining layout right here. And there's some, there's a dance for all y'all. I tell you, when I was making this video, it was late and uh, it was getting crazy. I was tired, but hey, we're gonna get this stuff done for you guys. There's the bisect line. I'm doing the moonwalk all the way over to measuring my actual side height length. We're gonna transfer those to the, to the bisecting line and the chimney side line. Hashtag how many times can I say line? It's all about the lines, guys. Get your lines right. Your fabrication is gonna be easy peasy. All right, throw in a little tab there. You'll see why in a minute. I'm gonna drop in a male seam allowance here and here, also here, and here, and here. Once we have those lines drawn in, I'm gonna show you a cool little trick I use to get my sweep radius using a pair of dividers. Some guys call them protractors. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the height 
here, transfer that down to the lower line there. Once we have those intersections, we're gonna transfer these two lines into the middle of the upper corner here. Once those two lines intersect, that's our new pivot line for our radius that is going to establish a nice smooth sweep. And I like to do this because it gives a nice consistent line. I mean, you can hand draw these in, but hey, why not use some tools to make things look a little bit better, uh, a little more consistent. All right, now that those lines are drawn in, everything's laid out, we can start cutting out our pattern. Here we go. We get rid of these pieces that don't need to be there. Thanks to the pattern layout, we know exactly what we need to cut away. This is gonna save a ton of time when going to install and fabricate. The layout, again, is essential to the, the speed and accuracy that's required when doing these details. Okay, fabrication time, guys. Let's get into the, the, the male seam fabrication. First thing we do is we stand that up. Uh, I'm using uh, the, uh, double, the double bar um, seamer and I'll, I'll put the link down below here, but th this seamer, or should I say this, this bender here makes a really nice straight line bend when you don't have a break on site. We use them all the time. I'll put a link in the description below so you can find yours. Okay, let's get to forming the pocket. I'm gonna start by scoring this line with this tool. It's a disc bender but I also use it as a scoring tool and it gets that bend started right into that corner. Kind of starts the bend. I put a little piece of rubber underneath there to kind of give it some, uh, some cushion underneath to allow that crease to happen. I'm gonna get my, my pocket forming crimper here. My large crimper's out. Again, I'm gonna put all these uh, tools in the, in the description below, uh, links to everything, so you don't worry about you know, making note of it. It'll all be in the description below. And guys, you know what? In the comments, maybe uh, uh, drop some of the tools that you guys are using. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys on some of the tools that you guys are using. All right, we have the uh, lines that I'm putting in here for the pocket. I wanna, I'm, I'm trying to um, score these lines. I don't, I don't know if I would do it again. It didn't really help that much, but I wanted to show you just to say, you know, there's this uh, disc bender that can help you achieve these score bends. It really gets that bend going right into that apex of this arrowhead formed pocket. All right, crimpers going in. We're gonna give the guy a little crimp right there on that line. Once that crimp is complete, we're gonna pull that out. See, you can kinda already see the pocket being formed there. It's almost like you could, you know, grab it with two hands and, and put it together. But now what I'm going to do is I'm getting this piece ready to take it to the break. Um, I put this, these seams down um, before I take it to the break. I'm going to score this pocket here. I'm going to crimp this guy as well. All in preparation to take it over to the break and start bending up our chimney side. So that's coming in a second, but I just wanted to get my crimp in here before I move to there. So now that we're at the break, the metal's already sort of pre-bent in these double folded areas, in these pocket folded areas. So the whole idea in fabricating these types of pieces is we're kind of working the metal up and in and side to side and adjusting as we go 
Take your time with this process. Follow my steps in the order that I'm showing them because there is kind of an order of operations when it comes to fabricating this stuff. So as you can see, I'm working this seam line here, the, the roof field angle line and the pocket fold angle line. So as you can see, I'm just, I'm just working it ever so gently as we, you know, bring it up all together at once rather than one bend at once. And then one, we're kind of just bringing them together a little bit at a time. So I'm going to unbend this male seam here. And now we're just getting ready to start bringing the top of this flashing up. I'm gonna remove a little bit of material there. You'll see why later on. I think that will be in the next video. All right, so got my deep tongs in here. We're gonna we're gonna score bend this line of the pocket. So it's kind of, kind of a, a pattern starting to emerge here. Is you know we're taking our layout lines, our bend lines, and we're working them, you know, and bringing the whole piece up, you know, back, side, and front folds up together as one. That's kind of the idea between behind these details is we're, we're bringing them up all together as one, and these pocket folds allow us to connect the side seam with the chimney side and so on and so forth without having to notch the metal, which is extremely crucial in keeping water outside of the building. You know, as soon as we notch the metal, we create a potential leak point. You know, a lot of guys are getting the sealant out and getting the caulking gun out and I mean, it works for a short time, but not a long time. And these details sort of match the lifespan of the actual install that we're trying to achieve. So, I mean, there's huge value in these details. What we're gonna do now, I wanna show you, I was a little bit off on my pocket fold here. Now, there is a way to adjust this. Uh, we need the ability to adjust, otherwise we're going to be throwing pieces out left, right, center. We're not perfect, but every single time, so we need the ability to adjust. I'm going to grab my needle nose pliers here. Link in the description below. These ones are specific to metal roofing, but I mean, I guess a regular pair of needle nose will work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the back end of this pocket and start twisting. And you can see where my thumb is, it's actually pushing that piece forward to a position where we can connect them and line them up. So now that they're lined up, I'm gonna clamp it. And now you can see that these two points are now lined up. Once I have these two pieces lined up, I can then take a pair of folders and um, I can lock this pocket by squeezing that pocket tight with a pair of folders. These folders right here, I wanted to kind of bring to your, uh, bring to light here, uh, bring, to, bring to your attention. These have some massive clamping power. I'll, again, link in the description below. I suggest you get these. Um, they, they just have a major crushing power and they allow me to lock that pocket exactly where I want it. I'm just gonna finish that pocket by folding it backwards or behind the chimney side. This will help when we go to install it. All right, I'm just gonna repeat this process here. My pocket was a little bit off on this end. So again, I'm gonna take my needle nose. I'm going to put it in the, the back end of that pocket, as you can see here. Once that is uh, once that is opened up a little bit, I can get my my needle nose in there and start twisting and turning, uh, so it again lines up. The same process as before. Now that I have them lined up, I have them clamped. 
Same thing, we're gonna crush that pocket to lock it. Pocket to lock it. Woo. It's uh, freestyle wrapping up in here. Here we go. Now that it's crushed, it's locked. Uh, we're going now to um, We have one more step in this process. Uh, I want it's a little bit overkill, but I wanted to show you guys what you you're able to do. There was that tab that I had laid out before. Just grab the folders. What this will do, it can, it can keep any potential moisture from collecting in between this pocket here. You know, it's just a little bit of extra protection. A little bit overkill, but I wanted to show you guys, you know, some of the the, the control we have with, with layout, I guess. All right, so this pocket now just gets turned 90 degrees. We don't turn it all the way around. You'll see why when we go to the roof mock-up, when we go to do the install. Okay, here we have a finished piece. We're going to take this piece and go over to the roof mock-up. You can see that is just it's set at 90 degrees. So we didn't turn it, we didn't fold it over. Very important. So we'll take this piece now. That 90 degree flange on the top is now going to hook around the back side of the chimney, and it will set exactly in place where we need it. So now I'm going to set this piece in place, getting ready to fab the the double seam sweep. And if everything's laid out properly, it's going to line up quite nicely on our, on our sweep coming off the corner of that chimney. Once we have a clamp, I'm going to throw a clip in up top here just to keep that panel from, from jutting out on me while I'm trying to fabricate this double fold. All right, I'm going to get another pair of clamps in here. I'm going to grab my marker. I'm going to draw that line in on the sweep. You can see that we, we've left enough material there to now come in with my curved snips and cut away that excess material. Guys, I would I strongly recommend picking up a pair of these curved snips they have left and rights. Again, links in the description, so don't worry about getting this jotted down. It's all down there. All right, we're going to cut this down. Make sure it's around the 3 eighths of an inch mark. That's a, that's a nice measurement to be able to fold over for a double seam. I'm gonna deburr here with the, the mouth of my snips. Once that's taken care of, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start peening over the single fold to start the process of a double seam. So on the sweep here, you can see the 3 8 of an inch allowance is quite nice because what it does, it actually stretches and folds to the shape of that sweep. Once that is turned over enough, I can start dollying it in with my the back side of my hammer here. I'm gonna get this nice and tight. That's the whole idea is to behind hammering it over is it keeps it nice and tight and form fitting to that sweep. All right, so I'm just gonna remove a little bit of material that I wasn't quite able to get earlier. Once that's removed, I'm gonna do some notching here for later on when we form the male seam back together. All right, just gonna draw the rest of that single fold over. Once that is folded over, I'm just gonna seam this closed. Again, you notice I'm getting it nice, nice and tight by hammering and peening that over. Okay, now that's peened over. I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna get my seaming anvil out. I'm gonna take the, the chisel side and put it against the back, the, I'm gonna put it against the male side of the seam and hit on the female side of the seam. And what this is gonna do is gonna create a bending crease. It's gonna start the bending process of the double seam. It's very important to, to establish before we start turning over. We're basically telling the metal where we want it to bend by pre-creasing it 
with the chisel side of our seaming anvil. You can see I'm st it's starting to draw down as I move along with my chisel side. Once, once you're happy with that, it should be close to 90 degrees before you start drawing the rest of that double seam over. But once, you're, once you have it, you can start dollying that seam over one more time to create that double fold detail, that waterproof double fold detail that is bar none the best connection that we can do with sheet metal in the roofing industry. This allows us to bring our panels up the wall. It allows us to not have to rely on caulking or notching of the metal. These are all folded details and they work really, really well in the roofing industry, in the, in the standing seam metal roofing industry. So as you can see, I got my seaming block on the back side there. These two tools work together to draw metal around uniformly, keeping everything nice and tight as we peen them around. Uh, this process goes back centuries. You know, it's almost equivalent to a, a blacksmith, but it, we're, we're metal smith um, using tools to bend and mold and seam together, stitch together metal to keep water out of a building. All right, so I'm, I'm getting the finishing touches on this double, sweep, double seam sweep. Wow, that was a tongue twister. Okay, I'm just dressing in the top side of this seam. It's coming together nice, right on that corner. Angles are looking good. You guys, you take time on forming these pieces, get the right tools. You'll end, your end result will, uh, will really come together nice. Your folds are nice and crisp. And, and take the time to practice, you know, maybe make a roof mock-up like I have here. Put it, put it somewhere, put it in your garage. I mean, it's gonna take practice, but guys, the, you know, the amount of callbacks you're gonna save with these details, you know, you're not gonna have to go back. You can 100% rely on folding metal like this. What I'm doing now, I'm bending down the water check. This is gonna prevent uh, blowing rain going up and getting inside and behind the panel. Eventually we'll put a counter flashing to go down and over that. But for now, I just wanted to show you guys what a water check looks like after it's bent down. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm dollying the rest of this double seam over uh, in preparation to turn up our male seam back to its original position so we can connect another panel up to it and finish that double seam over like so. Take my seaming block to the back side and dress that double seam over to complete the joint. All right, guys, once we have this all locked together, we'll, uh, we'll start the process with our seaming anvil. I'll take my spade, put it underneath, start hammering on it to bring it up. I angle my, my chisel and it starts to fold up. I take my folders and I finish the bend, bend that right over fold things back together and guys we have a finished scene guys if you if you're getting value out of this hit the like button make sure to subscribe to the channel we have a ton of videos up a ton of videos on the way we'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below on maybe what sort of videos you guys want to see but um, we appreciate you guys staying to the end uh, I know it was a long one but um, we, uh, we appreciate you guys being here. We want, to, we want to get our message out there that there are really impenetrable details that we can do with sheet metal and really up our craftsmanship when it comes to, to doing these details. 
So I got a clip in there now. It holds everything down and nice and flat in preparation for the panel that's gonna hook up to it. And here we have it. Guys, thanks for watching. Check out the videos from the previous series I'm gonna put up here. Also, YouTube has another one that they think you'd like to watch. Again, guys, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.